<clears throat> Hi guys and welcome back. In this video what we're going to do is create a uh, drum beat for our track and the first thing we need to do is create a new live set so that we're starting from scratch. So I'm going to go up to a file and I'm going to go to new live set and this will open up two MIDI tracks, two audio tracks, two return tracks and a master track for us. And then we need to set up our places folder so that we are going to the samples that you'll have downloaded with this course. So once you've downloaded your samples, drop them onto your desktop and then we can set it up from here. So we need to go to our places. I'm just going to remove this because we've already done it. But if we go to our places and then go to add folder, and then we need to point to our folder that we've downloaded. So I'm going to go to the desktop and um, ours is under the uh, Ableton Live 9 level 1 and then we go to the samples folder so we just click on that once and then click open and then if we click on this places and um, go down to uh, samples we can now see our samples loaded in so we've got our bass, our drum hits which is what we're looking for our drum loops, our effects and our instruments so we're going to go to our drum hits which is where our claps, hats, kicks, shakers and snares are and you can preview them just by clicking. Now if we go to our instruments at the top left, go to our impulse and just click and drag one onto a MIDI track and then click on this track itself, right click it and we're going to rename this. So you can either right click and click rename or you can uh, command an R on a Mac or control an R I think it is on a PC and just rename this to, we're going to put our kick and clap on here. Okay, so we've got our impulse drum machine down at the bottom here now, and we just talked through this in the last video. So if we go down to our samples folder from our places section, and then go to our drum hits, what we're going to grab in is our kick drum. So I'm just gonna click on it, drag it down, and drop it onto the first pad in our impulse drum machine. And then going to grab a clap, I'm gonna drop it onto the second pad and our snare I'm going to drop onto our third pad. So we can now preview each sample just by clicking on the preview button. The first thing I'm doing is bring this volume or this track down a wee bit. Always tends to be a wee bit too loud for us. So I'm going to now start drawing in our rhythm and to do this we need to go to the uh, top and click on any one of these clip slots and then just double click and it will create a MIDI clip for us. So if I double click, we'll get a one bar MIDI clip which is going to play around on loop. So this one bar is basically four beats. So we've got our time signature to four, four. So there's gonna be four beats to every bar. And you can see here donated at the top, we've got one, we've got 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, which is the second beat, the third beat, fourth beat, and the first beat here. So for dance music, you've got four, four time, or sort of four to the floor. So it's four beats to every bar. So we're gonna to wanna to draw a kick in here, 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 and here. And to do that, we're gonna go up to and grab the pencil tool. And our cursor will now change to a pencil tool and we can start drawing in notes onto the, uh, the MIDI note editor here in the center. Over to the left, you have what is actually being shown from your impulse drum machine. So you've got your kick drum here, as you can see, you've got the clap, you've got the snare, and then you've got the other empty slots from the, in the impulse drum machine that we haven't put any samples into yet. And then you've got this preview icon, which you can click on and off, and it'll allow you to click on these white notes to hear the samples. And at the top, we have a very similar screen to the arrangement view. So if I flick back to the arrangement view, you'll remember we had this zoom and the scrub area and the, the time. Well, it's exactly the same here. You've got your time at the top, you've got your zoom, and you have your scrub area. So what I'm gonna do is put a kick on uh, beat one, beat two, beat three, and beat four. Our claps are gonna go on beat two and beat four. And our snares are gonna go on beat two, 
and beat 4. So if I just unclick our pencil tool, I can now click play on this MIDI clip and it will play this round. So that is our first drum beat drawn in. So what I'm going to do now is just go down to the bottom right here. You've got your device view selector. which allows you to flick back and forth between the MIDI and the actual device itself. And I'm going to go in and just start editing some of the features here. So you'll remember these three on the right are global controls. So this is the global volume. So it will affect all of the volumes from within the, the drum machine itself. And you have a, an individual volume just to the left of that. So I'm going to go to our kick drum and I'm going to solo it using the top right button. And if I hit play on this MIDI clip again, I'm going to just extend out the decay time. Everything you drag in automatically goes to two seconds, but I know that there's a wee bit longer in this kick drum itself and a wee bit more weight behind it. So if I'm going to drag this up, so you can hear there, there's a wee bit more body coming through. If I now unsolo this, you can hear that with the other samples playing. And what I'm going to do is mute. So I'm going to click on mute on the snare. And we can just hear our clap sample. So if I click on our clap sample, what I'm going to do with this is shorten it to make it a wee bit snappier. So if I bring this decay time down until it starts to snap which is just around about here. So I'm going to set it just around about, what's that, 260 milliseconds. And with this, what I'm going to do is also pitch it down a wee bit. You can hear there, that sounds a wee bit nicer, just slightly pitched down. Go too far and it sounds a wee bit weird. So that sounds pretty good there. And then I'm going to unmute our snare drum. And with it, I know that there's a wee bit of body in behind there as well that's hiding. So what I'm going to do is increase the decay time on it. we get to hear more of the sample. Okay, we're starting to sound pretty good now. To the right of this machine, you can actually see the output volume. And you can see here that that is actually going into the red, which is, you don't really want your samples to be doing that. I know it's staying green here, and it's staying green there, but you don't really want it to go into the red anywhere as a sort of best practice. So what I'm gonna do, is bring the volume of the overall track down. And you can see there that is now in the green. That means we can raise this volume slightly. Okay, so we have uh, our beats on one, and we have our, our claps on uh, two and four, and it sounds a wee bit sort of uh, not very interesting. And what we can do is kind of shuffle those slightly to the left and it'll sound a wee bit more snappier. And it's kind of, uh, it's a good kind of technique to use on your claps and snares. So what I'm going to do first off is you'll notice that everything's kind of snapped into a grid here. And to get rid of this, you can just uh, right click and just go down to the fixed grid section. And in here at the, at the minute we're on 16ths, which means the bar has been divided into 16 notes. Um, you can set it to quarter notes, which would just be uh, your single beats to every bar. But we're going to set ours to off. And it means we can move our samples about without being snapped into a grid. And what I'm going to do is take our snare. So I'm just going to drag across our snare. And I'm going to just move it ever so slightly to the left. And I'm going to take our clap sample. And I'm going to move it just ever so slightly to the left as well. And I'm actually going to put it even just further to the left of the snare. Um, you can use your zoom tool there just to zoom in, just by clicking at the top and dragging down. And it's gonna have it just off to the snare. 
and I'm going to have the snare just off to the kick. And I'm just going to play this. And you can hear there, you, ca you get a kind of early hit, which almost gives it a wee bit of bite. And if we drag across both the snare and the clap, we can just go in and move them until we're happy with the sound. And I think that sounds okay there. And then to finish up, I'm gonna right click and set our grid back on to 16th notes. So we're snapped in. Okay, so now we're at this point where we're going to be moving on to something else. We're gonna to wanna to save our project first of all. So I'm gonna go up to the file menu. I'm going to save live set as, and we're gonna put this somewhere um, that will remember where it is. So I'm gonna put ours onto the, the desktop and we have our um, Ableton Live 9 course, which I've already set up. But what I'll do is I'll set up a new one here just as an example. So I'm gonna to go to new folder and I'll call it uh, Live Beginner and I'll create. And then I'll just give this a name. So I'm gonna call it um, Live Beginner Module 7. And I'll click Save. And that'll save everything into that folder for us so we can access it again later just by going to File and Open. And you'll see Desktop Live Beginner, Live Beginner Module 7. Okay, so we'll continue on then in the next video.